Hello, my name is Stephen and I'll be telling you all about the next stage in the process of making electricity here at Drax Power Station. So, we brought our biomass safely across the ocean to our ports and then trains have carried our fuel into the power station. But where are we going to keep it all? Our trains deliver a lot of biomass, each arrival providing us with 1,750 tonnes of pellets. Think of that as being the same as 1,750 small cars in weight. We have lots of deliveries every day, up to 20 every 24 hours, so we need somewhere safe to keep it until it is used in the process of making our electricity. One of the most important things in looking after our biomass delivery is to make sure it doesn't get wet. Anyone who likes the occasional bowl of mini Weetabix, that's a choc chip flavour for me please, will know what happens when you leave the milk in a bit too long. Yes, it turns into mush. Now I'm not going to judge you, if that's how you like your cereal that's absolutely fine, but we can't have that happen to our fuel. If our biomass gets wet and North Yorkshire rain will do that rather than milk, then we're in trouble, as mushy fuel can't be processed into the dry powder we need to put into our boilers. The problem that our engineers had to solve was to design a storage system large enough to hold hundreds of thousands of tonnes of biomass safely and securely. After lots of research and development, and that's known as R&D, they came up with the idea of making not one, but four huge hollow domes to keep the biomass fuel in. By linking these domes to a railway building and then onto the inside of the power station itself, we can move the fuel without it getting affected by the weather. Now, what special equipment could we use to move the biomass? Here's a clue. Think about a supermarket checkout. That's right, it's a conveyor belt. By using covered conveyor belts, the domes can become part of the, the process of getting our precious fuel safely into our boilers. Now to make the largest eco storage domes in the world, the designers and engineers had to think out of the box. And they came up with the idea of using a very interesting material to construct the outside of the dome and an amazing way to make the 50 meter high structure. You probably had some contact with this material yourself. By using a thin material called polypropylene, yes, you'll know it better as bouncy castle material, and inflating it with pumps, the outside of the dome was able to be created in a staggering 55 minutes. And here's a video you can watch speed it up to show how it was done. To make the dome safe and secure, it took a lot longer than 55 minutes, 20 weeks in fact, but the shape and structure was created in under an hour. When the domes are finally ready to receive the deliveries of biomass, they had a further 15 metres of metalwork added to the tops. This is called the head house and looks after the biomass entering the domes and lets out gases that we don't want to collect inside. To give you an idea of how tall 65 metres is, here's a comparison for you. At 65 metres, the big one roller coaster in Blackpool is the tallest in the country. So fuel is delivered from the conveyor belt into the tops of the domes and it is taken out at the bottom. And the biomass is then moved to the power station in more covered conveyors out from underneath the domes. Whilst the biomass is inside the dome, as well as keeping it dry, we must also make sure it doesn't get too hot. We use a gas called nitrogen inside the domes, as this helps reduce the amount of oxygen. This is a clever way of keeping things safe, because there are three things that a fire needs before it can start. It needs fuel, heat and oxygen. And we call this the fire triangle. By removing lots of oxygen, we can't have a fire. Now we can't avoid having fuel in the domes, that's what they're there for, and all that biomass sitting on top of itself gets very hot. So the only way of keeping everything safe is to remove as much of the oxygen as possible. Nitrogen allows us to do this, and we pump this gas through the domes all the time to keep things safe. Now, if you were standing near the domes, you'd hear a loud, roaring, hissing sound as the nitrogen is sent into the domes. Some people think it sounds like a dragon roaring, but you'll have to come and see us at Drax to find out if we really have pet dragons. 
Each of our four eco-storage domes holds a whopping 75,000 tonnes of fuel. That's 300,000 tonnes in total. That's a huge amount of biomass. In fact, it makes Drax the biggest biomass power station on the planet. Now we need this vast amount of biomass because we get through a lot in making our electricity. Those four domes, if they were all full, would only give us 12 days worth of fuel for us to use to make electricity if the power station was working at full capacity. So you can see how important it is for us to look after that amount of biomass and why we need world record breaking size storage domes to do it. OK, how much have you remembered? I'm going to ask you a few questions now. Uh, just five. So here we go. Question one. How many biomass domes does Drax have? Uh, question two. How long does it take to inflate one dome? Question three. What's the total in tons that all four domes can hold? Question four is what's the total height of one of our domes? And finally, question five. Can you name the three things that make up that fire triangle? OK, here's some answers for you. The answer to question one is we've got four domes in total. And question two, to inflate our domes, took 55 minutes. The total amount of weight that the four domes can hold is 300,000 tonnes. That's the answer to question three. Question four is 65 metres high in total. And finally, that tr fire triangle requires air, fuel and heat. Well, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed that and have learned a little bit more about how we make electricity at Drax. And there'll be another edition next week when you'll learn the next stage in the process. Bye.